Hi everybody, welcome to a Christmas special of The Lord is on Your Side. I hope you've had a lovely day. Um, I have persuaded Paul Jump tonight to come and talk to us about a time in his life when he knew the Lord was on his side. And so, before we do that, I thought I'd start with one of the most important questions of Christmas Day, and that is, Paul Jump, what is your favourite quality street and why? Hello, Joe Jump. My favourite quality street is the purple one. Uh, so, chocolate with caramel and a nut in the centre. Delicious. Why is that your favourite? That's, that's my it, least favourite. It, it, it combines everything that's good about a quality street. Chocolate, a bit of caramel, uh, but nuts, so it gives it a bit of extra texture and flavour. And that is why we are good sharing chocolate buddies, because mine would be... Uh, red one strawberry or orange cream i don't really mind but um yeah it's all about the dark chocolate and the cream for me anyway now we've got the important business out of the way um let's move on to talk about a time in your life or something that you want to share with us about um when you knew or how you knew the lord was on your side so paul what do you want to talk to us about well i one of the first times I really felt the Lord was on my side um, when life was difficult was when I began teaching. Uh, I'd done my uh, PGCE and I uh, got a job as a teacher. And uh, for those of you who uh, have done a PGCE or done a, a teaching degree and started teaching, it's full on when you start. I was a primary school teacher and it really was full on. Um, I also made a couple of... Uh, errors of judgment shall we say by disagreeing with my head teacher um, who liked didn't like people to disagree with her so she made life difficult for me uh, as a result and and that just put a lot of pressure on me as a new teacher not knowing what I was doing and uh, with a with a boss who uh, wasn't making life any easier um, and so I ended up working all hours of the day and night You've got to do a lot of that anyway as a newly qualified teacher, but I, I did even more. Um, and some weeks it was 70 uh, plus hours a week uh, of uh, school work. Wow, yeah, I remember we were friends at the time and I remember you didn't do very much else apart from school work. Um, so how was there a scripture at that time that you found helpful or that um, helped you manage that level of stress and intensity? Yes, um, so I felt quite vulnerable as well as a newly qualified teacher, you know, um, needing help and support. Um, and so the scripture the Lord gave me, which was uh, wonderful and encouraging, was Psalm 46. It's uh, a scripture that has been uh, helpful to many people this last year as well. And I preached on it at the start of lockdown back in March. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth is removed and the mountains go into the heart of the sea, though the waters of the sea roar and foam and the mountains shake at its swelling. Though the world is in chaos, we don't need to worry because the Lord is on our side. That's what I've really felt the Lord saying. Uh, through that scripture and I memorized Psalm 46 which isn't very long but I memorized it and uh, I used to bring it back to mind while I was in the classroom while I was on the way to school on the way back from school uh, and it really provided a calming influence on my life it was like a balm as well a real comfort and encouragement Great. And so I guess that was quite a few years ago now. And yeah, I remember it was an incredibly stressful time. But of, is there, have there been other times or other stressful situations where has it been that scripture or has it been other things that the Lord's used to help you? Well, the Psalms are wonderful. And it's usually the Psalms that the Lord uses in um, whatever circumstance I'm in to comfort, encourage, correct, um, uh, because they really 
uh, there's something about them which connects with my emotions. Psalm 46, the Lord has used time and time again, though. Uh, I keep coming back to it. Uh, as soon as life gets difficult for whatever reason, God is our strength and refuge, a very present help in trouble. Um, if I don't know what to say to somebody who's uh, suffering or in trouble or difficulty, God is your strength and refuge, a very present help in trouble. Um, and so a few years ago, four and a half years ago, when I uh, went to the hospital uh, to visit uh, Max and Kerry and Colin after Max's tragic accident, the words that I said to them when I met them were, God is our strength and refuge, a very present help in trouble. Yeah. Um, and thinking about your experiences, how, how then, just flesh out for us, how does that help when you're feeling stressed, when you're tempted to work every hour under the sun? Um, what, what is it about the, that truth that changes things? I, th I think there's a few things about it. Uh, the first uh, thing that's true is that um, God is God. He's in control of the world and we're not. And the world at times appears in chaos. Uh, the waters roar and foam, the mountains shake. You know, he's talking about tsunamis, talking about earthquakes, talking about the very foundations of creation coming undone. And sometimes we feel like that in our own lives. You know, with the very foundations of the world foundations of life coming undone we f many people have felt that this year with the coronavirus we feel like that at the moment with this um uh, you know with with, with life seeming seemingly out of control and has not been able to meet people like we wanted to god is in control that's what the psalm says not only that though we're also told that god is a refuge and a fortress and that is he's um He's someone we can come to for support, for protection, for provision. Um, he's, he's not just a God who is uh, in control, sovereign over this world. He's a God who cares. He's the, he's the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the angels. Uh, but he's also uh, with us. And we know that particularly through uh, Christmas time in Jesus Christ. God with us, Emmanuel. Um, God coming to dwell with us, God coming to become one of us, become a man, um, and ultimately to take on himself the, the troubles of the world when he died on the cross, broken for our brokenness, um, you know, punished for our sin, judged in our place, that we might be forgiven and might be right with God again, accepted by God. Find him as our refuge and fortress once more. And therefore, we don't need to fear. And that's the big thing at the end of, of it all. Because God is our refuge and strength, because we know that in Jesus Christ, we don't need to fear. What have we got to be afraid of? The coronavirus? Well, God's in control. The, the mountain shaking? Well, God's in control. Tsunamis? God's in control. Uh, uh, bad relationships with your head teacher? God's in control. Uh, losing your job? God's in control. Uh, finances are tough, God's in control, you know, um, and he's in control for our good. Interrupt. Um, you say that and it rolls off the tongue beautifully, so does that mean, Paul, John, that you live a life that's stress-free then, because you're so confident that God's in control? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I preach better than I live, as you know. And, um, well, I thought it'd be quite hard for you to deny that. Uh, I can deny it to other people. I can't deny it to you. So, yeah, I, I always preach better than I live. Um, I know it uh, better now than I did before um, because of experiences uh, like that one. Um, but I always preach better than I live. We all do. We all, we all know. You, what would you say to somebody? It's Christmas Day. We're supposed to be feeling happiest and most joyful day of the year and we're not feeling that tonight and there's all sorts of things that might be bubbling up and causing us stress and we know the answer is God's in control we believe that to be true but that's not where our emotions are landing tonight what how 
what advice have you got and how could you help us to rub that in more deeply in a way that changes the way that we feel and our ability to worship that's great meditation meditate on that song uh, or find another song which speaks of similar things but meditate that's the way we rub the the, the bible into our lives uh, we're not very example? that's quite a christian word meditate or quite a modern word what can you what do you mean by that uh, it is a modern word it is a, a yeah a christian word you're right but it's um a very contemporary thing to do we all daydream we all think about things when we're not thinking about anything in those moments our minds if we want to find comfort and uh, and, and hope and a refuge uh, and help in god we need to turn to psalm 46 or something similar so we need to we need to literally um call to mind those words of the psalm and think about them again and again and again and again and reflect on them that's what i did all those years ago when i was a teacher i i, I had to memorize the psalm to do that because you don't have the bible in the classroom or when you're driving or in the corridor or and so memorize uh, uh, psalm 46 or memorize a psalm and keep calling those words to mind the lord of hosts is with us the god of jacob is our refuge and think about those words the fact that that that, that god is the lord of hosts the lord of angels he has he has millions and millions of angels at his disposal that he can send to help whenever he wants and he's with us the lord of hosts is with us he's with us he's not far off he's with us um, He's in the classroom, he's in the corridor, he's in the car, he's, he's there. Um, the God of Jacob, oh, well, that's interesting as well, isn't it? Because who's Jacob? Well, he's a, he's a, he's a Roman. He's a, he's a, he, you know, if anyone doesn't deserve God to be with them, it's Jacob. And yet Jacob was with him. God was with him. God met him. Um, God saved him. So God, are you talking about meditation then in the sense of when a difficult or anxious or uncertain thought rises up in your heart and in your mind that's the time to then call to mind who god is and to think more about him and who he is and what he's promised to us than to let the anxiety or the worry or the stressful thoughts dominate our thinking is that is that what you mean yeah basically we're always thinking about something and the reason we get stressed and anxious and worried and fearful um, and frustrated is because at the forefront of our mind in those moments is uh, something sinful or something which in and of itself is good but which we want too much not being able to have the christmas that we'd planned for example yeah or quiet uh, a quiet and peaceful household with all the children well behaved or whatever um and uh, or you know we want to be safe from the virus some of these things are good things but we can want them too much uh, and so we need to memorize the bible we need to not just memorize it but reflect on it meditate on it think about it call it to mind and let it change our hearts um, let the scriptures move us and transform us so that when those fears and worries um, begin to rise something else uh, is there instead a, a voice which is stronger a voice which is um uh, more comforting a voice which can dispel the fears yeah i guess that truth has got to be truer to us in the moment than our worries and our fears and our uncertainties yes but and when it's not when it's not uh, more real to us we need to make it more real by thinking about those things I think I think we let ourselves off the hook a bit too easily uh, with some of this because we say, well, you know, uh, well, you know, life is hard and life is uh, tough, and uh, and I know what the Bible says, but um, you know, it's still life is hard, life is tough. That's true, but the more we meditate, 
the more we think, the more we reflect, the more comfort and joy we will have. Uh, the less we will be fearful, the less we'll be anxious, the less we'll be sad. And so we need to keep talking to ourselves. Um, yeah, thanks very much. Let's, um, is it okay if I pray for us? That I guess that that comfort and joy would be tangible and real for us, even though this wouldn't be the Christmas that we would have chosen. Please do. Father God, thank you so much that your word reminds us of who you are and the truths of what it means to be your children. Father, we, we pray that this Christmas time, when we feel frustrated or um, our days haven't gone the way we might have chosen, um, Father, please, would we be those who bring to mind who you are, the privileges that we have as your children. And Father, would you help us to rub that good truth into our hearts and into our minds so that we are filled with your comfort and joy. Father, that's our prayer over this holiday season, that we would be those who, with imperfect lives and in stressful situations, know the comfort and joy that comes from you. Thank you for the way that you've done that in jump his heart and life in difficult seasons and father we pray that for all of us today and this next week that we would be those who experience the comfort and joy that belongs to the children of god amen no man um my turn to say it good night and god bless Join with the angel song Rejoice